Welcome, Amini. I'm with Dr. Amini Rupakala. She is a mentor with the Mentor Project, but she works at Colgate Palmolive. Let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Rapukala. Amani is a microbiology research scientist. She received her Bachelor's of Microbiology and Master's of Microbiology in India. She then received her PhD or Doctorate of Microbiology at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology in Switzerland. She then conducted her postdoctoral research at Rutgers University in New Jersey. She now works for Colgate Palmolive in New Jersey as a research scientist to explore how bacteria in our mouth can be both healthy and bad, and to apply her knowledge to develop mouthwashes or toothpastes that help to fight against the bad bacteria in our mouth that cause gum diseases, tooth decay, gingivitis, and so many other issues. Welcome, Amini. You have an incredible background. Hello, Deborah. Thank you for having me. Can you tell me a little bit about what you do as a microbiologist? Absolutely. I'd love to. So as a microbiologist, I deal with the tiny little creatures called bacteria, fungi, and viruses. And these can either be good or detrimental to us and our environment. Examples of good bacteria are those that help you make yogurt at home. Examples of good bacteria can also be those that help clean up our environment from pollutants or the waste that we produce. For example, they would eat the pollutants or break down these pollutants to survive. And by doing that, they're creating a pollutant-free earth for us. Other examples of bacteria are in our mouth. There are two types, again, the bad and the good bacteria. The bad bacteria, if we do not brush our teeth after 24 hours, they accumulate and cause a plaque or a dental biofilm. And you see the white things that remain if you don't brush in the morning, first thing in the morning. And by using a toothbrush or a toothpaste, we can eliminate those bad bacteria that would otherwise make us cause tooth decay or gingivitis or gum disease. So I work on developing products that would help eliminate such bad bacteria from our mouth and focus on how we can develop the good bacteria in our mouth. That's so interesting. I had no idea that microbes could say eat uh, our pollutants and make our, our environment clean. Um, and I also didn't know there were good and bad um, microbes. This is really fascinating. What got you interested <laughs> yeah. in going to school for microbiology? Um, as a high school student, I knew I wanted to take microbiology because of the exposure I had to different types of science when I was young. So growing up with my both teachers, as, uh, with both my parents as science teachers, I always asked questions. And once I was in a library browsing through an encyclopedia, and I love encyclopedias because of their colorful pictures, and I would browse through them as a kid, and I came upon pages and pages of beautiful looking microbes, you know, bacteria of different shapes and sizes. And I would ask my teacher, what do they do? How are they useful? How do they do what they do? And my teacher advised me to start going to high school fairs, to start learning about these microbes and learning about how they do what they do. So I started presenting high school projects from the time I was in my fourth and fifth grade and as a way to learn more about new microbiology projects out there. That's when I discovered what all things bacteria could do. They could cause disease, but they're also useful for us. They clean up our environment, but some of them can also cause very bad diseases. So there are pros and cons, again, of bacteria, and different types of bacteria exist. And that's when, in high school, I decided I want to learn all about them. I want to become a bacteria specialist, a microbiologist. And that's how I decided to pursue microbiology. I love it. You've had a passion since you were young, and you're still doing it. That's really, yeah. really cool. <laughs> Thank you. you. Know, Amani, you have traveled and lived in so many places. Can you tell <laughs> me about your love of travel 
and and how sure. how it's been being educated in so many different countries? Sure. So growing up in Botswana, Africa was a totally different experience than what my friends and peers uh, have shared with me with what growing up in a different continent like uh, in Asia, India, or in Europe, or in USA is. So being an Indian and growing up in Africa among African friends, I absolutely loved it. I got to learn their ways of uh, culture. Um, my everyday conversations would be different. And uh, I also learned about um, the po uh, how a government works and each country's governments work differently. And when I grew up, my parents decided we, we wanted to go back to India. And so I wanted to go back to India with them and we discovered my roots. And so I went from Africa to India. And again, science in India is taught in a different way than it was in Botswana. So there was a transition period where I had to learn a different type of curriculum and learn things differently. It was challenging and yet interesting. After that, I chose that I want to now travel to places for my career. With the childhood that I've had, my parents had given me that opportunity to grow up in Botswana. But now I wanted to take things onto myself and travel the world for science. And so I said, what's the most exotic place I can choose to do my PhD? And that would still give me a PhD in microbiology and what I love. And I searched for a lot of places and Switzerland came upon me because my love for chocolate, my, my love for mountains and nature took me there. <laughs> and, uh, and it was a wonderful experience. So I could combine all my passion for science and my non-science interests like skiing, snowshoeing. I could explore all that and yet be doing a wonderful PhD. I really enjoyed my PhD experience in Switzerland. And then I decided what new continent can I now explore for my next level of research. And I looked up and I found a good opportunity in US, in New Jersey, and I then started exploring US and uh, a different area of microbiology. And so I think science can take you places if you decide to be open to travel and explore different cultures and learn about different people. It can be really interesting. I really admire you and I'm so inspired by you because I never put together science with world travel, but here you've done it and it really is amazing. You've been educated in several countries on many continents. It's just so fascinating to me, I love it. Um, <laughs> How many languages do you speak? <laughs> I speak Botswana, the language in Botswana. I, um, in India, I, I also speak two Indian languages fluently. Um, when I went to Switzerland, I loved that I had to learn French to know the locals better. And this, kind, this helped me integrate into the local system. So I learned French. And uh, I want to learn more now. <laughs> You're amazing. I'm so incredibly inspired by you. What, what has it been like for you being a woman in all of the different countries that you have studied in and lived in going for a science degree and now here working in the field of science? Um, I never saw as if women are not being empowered in science. In fact, I felt so empowered being a scientist. And all my mentors until a year ago have been men. And they have been absolutely amazing and encouraging of women in science. I think the main thing is when you become a scientist and you enter the lab wearing a lab coat, wanting to discover something that you're curious about, no one sees that you're a boy or a girl doing that experiment. They see the curiosity in you to ask the questions and to want to answer those questions. So I absolutely believe that science has equal and in fact more opportunities for young ladies and women. And there's a long career in science. Even if it is not lab based, there are many more plentiful career opportunities out there that you can have with a career in science. Do you have any recommendations for kids, both boys and girls? Um, sure, so I would say, 
ask those questions that you've been afraid or dreadful to ask. Like, why does a spider walk the way it does? Ask Alexa or Google Home, you might have it at your home. Or open up an encyclopedia in your neighborhood or at home or in your school library and search the answer to that question that you last asked. And when you have these home parties or dinners and people come home, ask them, what do you do for a career? What do you do for earning? What kind of jobs exist out there? And if you ever get to meet a scientist, definitely ask them a lot of questions. Amani, those are great recommendations. I wouldn't have thought to say, hey, ask Google and Alexa, but those are such concrete, easy to do, uh, easy recommendations for kids. It's been <laughs> such a pleasure talking with you. You really are an inspiration on so many different levels. And we're so fortunate to have you as a mentor with the Mentor Project. Thank you very much. Thank Amani. you, Deborah. Thank you.